you need to know about this AIO. This is the Aza Cube 360. Now I've been sitting on this AIO for a bit too long and my contact who's in charge for Aza among a million other companies has been asking me again and again and again if I had time to check it out, which I didn't. It was just pushed back and back and back until I finally had time. Well, that was clearly a mistake because now I know why he has been asking me so much about it. This thing is... No, I, I won't oversaturate this video with flashy keywords. Considering what this area is or what it is made out of, radiator thickness, fans and, and so on, and considering all of that, it is unnaturally good. Like, I have had to redo benchmarks, good. Work that was already average over multiple runs. But let's not get ahead of ourselves here. This is the Aza Cube 360, Aza's latest and greatest AIO. Obviously featuring a cube, which is significantly bigger in person than the images made me believe. The Aza Cube comes in the usual AIO type of packaging, containing the mounting hardware for all nowadays relevant AMD and Intel sockets, some thermal paste, adapters, extensions, the radiator pump combo, and three fans. If you were to get the two 40mm version, it's going to be smaller with only two fans, but we are focusing on the 360 here today. To install the cube, Acer uses the same mounting mechanic as the Cougar Poseidon we recently reviewed. And I, I have to say, even if I really disliked it on the Cougar, I'm slowly growing into understanding why they did it or why they did it the way it is now. I'm feeling less uncomfortable rotating a water block into a half loose mounting. On Intel, take the provided backplate and put the ends into position according to your socket. Then take the red rubber knobs and these Intel screws and then stick the screw into the end of the knob that has a wider opening. And then screw four of them into the backplate. Over on AMD, remove the pre-installed retention brackets and replace them with the AMD screws. Now for both sockets, Take either the longer AMD or square Intel retention bracket, place it on the screws and keep it in place by rotating the provided thumb screws by two or three turns. But do not screw anything down all the way. The bracket still needs to be loose. And now apply some thermal paste, take the Aza Cube water block, keep it slightly tilted, push it into the center and then rotate it into position. Once you feel that the AIO has hooked itself underneath the mount bracket, which you can see once the bracket just jumps up. Once that has happened, keep the water block straight and tighten down all the screws in an X pattern. Yes, I still absolutely prefer the method where you have like a set of steps that you can only do a very certain way and here with that like rotation and you needing to feel when the hooks are really in place. I don't know, I'm, I feel now okay with it to do like with closed eyes but I fear that this is a point where you could cause trouble without even the user realizing that he has done something wrong. Anyway, let's talk about the AIO itself. What we got here is the 360mm model coming in at 405 by 120mm total. Considering the difference, we got about 30mm overhang on the tube side and about 15 on the other end. Speaking of, the tubes are quite nicely braided, 400mm long and adjustable at the water block. The radiator seems to be about 20 fins per inch. Interestingly enough, these fins do not look like the usual V-shape. In fact, it, it looks a lot like a technique we have seen from another company not so long ago, which had a very similar mounting. The fans that come with the Cube are unnamed Aza 2000 RPM fans pushing up to 57.5 CFM at up to 1.8 mm of H2O static pressure. And I want you to keep these numbers in mind because they are shit. They are shit numbers and I don't believe them. Anyway, to connect the fans, Aza used a similar approach like we have already seen on a bunch of Fantex fans. The powered RGB cables are quite short and daisy chainable until the very last one. The RGB cable itself is that special needs kind, but using the included adapter and extension, we can easily connect everything, including the RGB from the water block, all using a single ARGB and PVM connection from the motherboard. Speaking of which, RGB. The fans are illuminated from the center with a infinity ring topping it off. If you like, 
like it, great. If not, at least the quality of LEDs is quite good. And quality in general is quite good on here. Everything feels relatively well made and I'm personally happy that Asa did function over form on the cube. Like Asa was really notorious of using fans on AIOs that had huge gaps in between them. On here, no. The fans are glued to each other. We got out sticking rubber for additional noise absorption and there is absolutely no way for the air to go other than straight through the red. Good job. Plus the fans are really sturdy AF. Like they are really, really sturdy, really are. On the RGB front, we got the eye candy of this AIO, the Q. The water block is covered by a quite giant piece of plastic with that edge RGB. And to be honest, in person, it, it looks really nice. Better than the image is nice, but it's useless. Or no, it's not useless, but that thing is mostly hollow. There is no pump in here. What Asa did here, I have not seen in this implementation before. We had IIOs that had their pump not above the water block, but in the tubes or straight inside the red. But for this one, Asa built it into the in or outlet of the radiator. Now, I don't know which one it really is, and I can't really find out unless I cut the tubes, which I don't really want to do, so it's either in or outlet. But in the end, I don't really care, because whatever they have done here, or whatever the combination of everything here has done, it works unnaturally well. We benchmark the Asa Cube 360 on top of our 3900K benchmark machine using the 120, 250 and 320 watts preset over a very permanent time span. At 120 watts going through the socket, the Cube managed to keep the CPU at 27.4 degrees C above ambient. 27.4! That's the second best result we had so far. That's even beating the thicker boys like the Alpha Cool Core Ocean T38, a very, very good result. And nothing about this AIO shouted, I am a top performer. At least not by spec. By spec, the fans are kinda trash. But no, top performance for gaming related workload. And the funny thing to me is it's not even that loud. Slowly lowering the fan speed in 10% steps showed that the Asa Cube 360 is absolutely a top performer from start to finish. It was battling against the Lian Li 2 Trinity. And while they battled, so many, so much more expensive AIOs were left in the dust. Of course, we still got the usual big AIOs on just 120 watts shenanigans. For high performance coolers, pushing the fan speed down can create all kinds of weird lines. Like, if the AIO is big enough, I can sometimes push the fan speed down by 20, 30, 40%, nothing happens, or it become, becomes even colder. And the same thing happened here, so let's just up the load. At 250 watts, the cube shined just as much. At 53.9 degrees C above ambient, it may now be slightly behind the Alpha Cool T38 for 20, 420, and Trinity Performance, but this is still third place beating an army of other coolers. And the only reason the other two won is one is 38 mm thick, or the radiator is 38 mm thick, and the other one has a 38 mm thick red and double the amount of fins and fans that are just on crack. The corresponding noise to performance graph looks even slightly better this time. Now the cube is also comparable to the Lee and Lee Trinity performance. Absolutely weird. But now coming to the god mode. At 320 watts, the Acer cube managed to get back to the second spot at 73.2 degrees C above ambient. Absolutely wild. The corresponding noise to performance graph looks very, very good. The Acer cube delivers a completely unexpected result. What in the hell is wrong with this AIO? the only thing that was able to outperform it is either using insane fans or to have thicker reds with double the fins. It's completely wild and the results had to be rechecked again because they are just astonishingly good for what we are looking at. But we have theories. The first one is about the pump. The last time I personally saw a pump being built into a radiator was on the NZXT M22 and that small 120 AIO was performing like a freaking champ. Maybe partially due to the pump. And here we don't have the same approach 
but something a bit similar. Maybe having the pressure build up right at the in or outlet of the water channels uh, helps the radiator to perform as well as it did, maybe? Another theory I have is about the water block, because I don't really know what is going on inside of here. I know that there is a water block at the bottom and with copper, and I know that there is a piece of plastic containing some RGB. However, the thing is freaking giant and there could be a lot of heat transferring things going on in there. Maybe there is something else going on inside of this that I have not seen before. I, I just don't know. But if you want to know, let me know down below and if there are enough people, I will cut this open in front of a camera. But in reality, it doesn't really matter. As a whole, as a cooling product, the Acer Cube is astonishingly good. It is not the best. This is still reserved for the Lee and Lee Galahad 2 performance. But at least for the coolers we have tested so far, as far as like regular sized coolers with normal fans are concerned, it is very, very good. Which is interesting, because I googled about its performance after I saw the numbers and there is very very little coverage about it online. The only one I found is on Tom's Hardware and their model was okay. Not bad, but just okay. Maybe I got a lucky golden sample or they got the reverse, who knows. But uh, damn, the performance for, for our benchmarks was really shocking. On another note, I am not so sure about the fact if every installation orientation is appropriate for this one, as I'm not sure how the pump is exactly built, if it is built like a very normal pump, like on every other AIO, having it oriented towards the front of the case with the tubes at the top might lead to air being permanently trapped around the area where the pump is, which would, uh, would end up in the equivalent of a regular pump as the highest point of another loop, uh, which is devastating, so uh, you don't want to do this. But on here, if you are about to install this thing, better be safe than sorry. Tubes down and make sure that the pump itself is lower than at least something. And another thing to consider, which is very unique, uh, the tubes are coming out of the water block at the bottom, which is kind of interesting and due to its size, it should not create issues with uh, like the first PCIe slot, but uh, beware of that. But okay, for today, this is going to be it for Asa and their Cube 360 with unexplainably good performance. On a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you wanna join, the link is down below. And of course, we still have channel membership, so if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to force Asa to release a Cube Square because that might finally cool down a 4900K. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the Anormax AIO, one of the more interesting choices for gaming. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.